So today we heard some sad news. Uh, Charlie Watts passed away at the age of 80 in London. He was a longtime uh, drummer of the Rolling Stones. He joined the band in 1963 and uh, he was a longtime member. He was battling throat cancer for many years and it is sad news that the world lost a legendary musician and it's actually also the day I was planning to do a Rolling Stones video. It's the 40th anniversary of Tattoo You by the Rolling Stones. He actually passed away on the exact date of the 40th anniversary. So now let me uh, continue with my review of Tattoo You. So did you know that this album was actually a collection of outtakes that was recorded throughout the 70s? Um, going back to Goat's Head Soup. Now, if you're a Rolling Stones fan, uh, you probably know this already, but this was actually new to me. Um, I will be honest with you. I have been a fan of the Rolling Stones for years. But I've never been a mega fan. I've always preferred uh, other bands like The Beatles, The uh, Doors, Led Zeppelin, and Pink Floyd. But when I was growing up, this was one of the albums that I owned, um, along with uh, Emotional Rescue. And I actually never knew this was a collection of outtakes. I thought it was just a new album. So the band is also uh, releasing a 40th anniversary box set on both uh, CD and vinyl. I will give you some info on that uh, towards the end, so please stay until the end of the video. Now let's talk about the album. So the reason they made this album was because they were under the obligation of uh, going out on tour and they needed an album to tour behind. And this was a time when a lot of the band members weren't getting along very well. The band's production team basically found a bunch of old uh, recordings from old sessions. Uh, and these dated back to like the 70s. Uh, and they took these unfinished recordings and they basically finished them off. So for this album, the band uh, was Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Ronnie Wood, Bill Wyman, and Charlie Watts. And Mick Taylor does play on two of the tracks. And I do remember this album very well. It was a very big hit. The album starts off with uh, the most popular song on the album called Start Me Up. It's a hard rocker, also their first single. Um, this one even reached uh, number two on the Billboard 100. This one was actually recorded during uh, 1978, during the Some Girls uh, album sessions. It actually started as a reggae rock track called Never Stop, but they changed it to Start Me Up. The song has a very iconic riff. I've always thought that the band uh, The Cult with the song Love Removal Machine, they kind of like ripped off this song a little bit, but I guess that's open to interpretation. The next song is uh, Hang Fire. It's a straightforward, fast-paced rock and roll song. The lyrics are like of a political nature of uh, England back in that time. And this was another song written during the Some Girls and Emotional Rescue Sessions. And this was also the third single. Short song, a little over two minutes, but it's a catchy song. The next song is called Slave. It's a very upbeat song. It's a blues rock song. It was recorded around 1975. Uh, it's also interesting that Pete Townsend provides some backing vocals on the song. This is just like a blues jam, typical uh, Rolling Stone song. They mix some funk and dance elements into it. There's also a cool uh, saxophone solo by Sonny Rollins. And this was from the Black and Blue Sessions from 1975 and another pretty strong track from the album. The next song is called Little TNA and this one is actually uh, has Keith Richards on main vocals. Uh, it's just straightforward rock and roll. One of those songs that captures that classic Rolling Stone sound. Uh, the song was a leftover from the Emotional Rescue album, and uh, Keith Richards says that he was influenced by rockabilly with this song. The next song is called Black Limousine. It's a straightforward blues rocker, also recorded for the Some Girls album, uh, recorded sometime around 1978. The song has a nice beat, uh, pretty cool uh, harmonica playing on it as well. Next song is Neighbors, another hard rocker. It's a leftover song from the Emotional Rescue album. Inspired by Keith Richards' experience uh, with some of his neighbors uh, being evicted in his uh, New York City apartment and the neighbors uh, complaining about him playing his music too loudly. This one had a music video uh, inspired by the Alfred Hitchcock movie Rear Window. And the song is another straightforward rock and roll song. It's a fun song, has some saxophone in it, and it's pretty cool. So that was side one, and now moving up to side two. Um, the way they recorded the album is that they put the hard rockers on one side and the ballads on side two. So let's continue. The first song on side two is called Worried About You. The slow ballad from 1975 uh, from the Black and Blue Sessions. Also recorded right after the departure of Mick Taylor and Mick Jagger 
sings in like a falsetto uh, style, similar to uh, the song Emotional Rescue. And they did a music video for this that was just a performance of the song. Next is the song Tops, and this one dates back to the Goat's Head Soup sessions. This one has uh, Mick Taylor playing on it. Slow bluesy song, that's a pretty cool guitar and piano. After that is Heaven, uh, this has Mick Jagger singing in a falsetto style. Uh, another slow ballad, uh, the guitar playing is pretty cool, it reminds me a little bit of Jimi Hendrix. And the song was also from the Emotional Rescue Sessions and has to sound like so many other songs from that album. <clears throat> Next is No Use in Crying, it's a slow bluesy song, has some guitar and piano. Another song from the Emotional Rescue uh, album and has a classic Rolling Stone sound and the album ends with Waiting on a Friend and this is one of those songs I remember very well back in the day. It was a fairly big hit reaching uh, number 13 on the Billboard 100. It's a very memorable music video, I remember it very well. Uh, shot in front of the building used uh, by Led Zeppelin's Physical Graffiti album. I actually never knew this and the building is also in New York City uh, on St. Mark's Place and I'm pretty sure I've walked past it at some point because I used to hang out around there many years ago. But the song was uh, recorded back in uh, 1972 during the Goat's Head Soup sessions, and this one also has Mick Taylor on the uh, on the album on the song. So I'm going to talk about the 40th uh, anniversary box set. Okay, so this is from the Amazon page, uh, the Tattoo You 2021 Remaster uh, 5 LP box set. So the price is $197 and 82 cents and here it is it has a box it has a really big book and uh, five lps there's another image of it okay here's the cd version of it four cds a picture disc a box set price is uh, a little cheaper 149 dollars and 88 cents here's an image of it it has uh picture cds so you can see it has uh, four cds and a book with it and uh, some little extras there and this will be available on October 22nd, 2021. So that's it. Um, it's a really great album. I guess it will go down in history as like that album that celebrated an anniversary on the day uh, Charlie Watts passed away. So let me know what you think. Comment below. We'll talk about it. Tomorrow I have another great album coming up. The debut by the band Boston. And after that, debut by the band Pearl Jam. So like, comment, subscribe. This is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John. Check out my other videos over here and I'll see you in the next one.